Hey, I'm Harold. Welcome to the Robot Living Studio at NUS, virtually of course. Here with me are Tasbulat and Wei Chong, two of my fellow co-authors, a safe distance away. And this is Frankie, our robot arm. Together we are working on combining vision and touch sensing in a power-efficient, event-driven perception model. We are inspired by biological processing, which is asynchronous and event-driven. Information is not transferred or processed on a clock, but only as needed in the form of discrete impulses called spikes. So let's look at an example. As I move my hand, this event camera only picks up differences in illumination, and each pixel fires asynchronously. In this way, the event-driven camera can achieve higher temporal resolution, lower latency, and lower power consumption. In this work, we introduce a new neuromorphic or event tactile sensor called the new touch. It's designed to mix a finger with a 3D printed bone and equal flex as a protective skin. Sensing is performed using a layer of electrodes with 39 pixels and a graphene-based piezo-resistive pressure transducer. The graphene transducer has a high Young's modulus which helps to decrease hysteresis and response time. New touch achieves a 1 millisecond without latency and can scale up to many more pixels by leveraging an event-based platform called ACERS. During contact, positive or negative spikes are generated. By uniquely encoding each pixel's power signature, tactile information can combine and propagate upstream by a single electrical conductor, which simplifies wiring on any factors. We propose a visual tactile spiking neural network, which combines both vision and the touch event signals, and is itself even driven. Our VT SNN architecture is straightforward. We have two modality SNNs, one for vision and one for touch. These networks generate latent spiking representations that are combined and passed to a task network. For classification, the task network has an output neuron for each object class, and the neuron that fires the most is chosen as a winning class. A standard loss used to train such SNNs is the spike count loss, which is the difference between the desired and obtained spike counts. Notice that the spike count loss is only concerned with the total number of spikes. With SNNs, we don't have to wait until the entire input sequence is complete, but can begin classification as soon as output spikes are generated. In this paper, we introduce a generalization of the spike count loss that incorporates temporal weighting by a function omega. This weighted spike count loss allows us to increase the emphasis on early spikes, for example, by setting omega to be a monotonically decreasing function. To test our setup, we run two different classification experiments using our visual tactile SNN and ablated versions that either use only touch or only vision. The first experiment involves four different containers, each with five different weights, so 20 class in total. Frankie would pick up the object and predict the class. The plot here shows the mean test accuracy with standard deviations of the different models over time. Let us first examine the models trained using the standard spike count loss. We see using the vision on the model begins to classify objects earlier because small movements occur as the grip rate closes. Tactile spikes don't appear until contact is made with the object at around 2 seconds. Although the combined visual tactile model achieves the better accuracy at the end, it doesn't achieve particularly good early classification compared to the vision. This problem is rectified using our proposed weighted spike count loss, which pushes accuracies up in the early phases while sustaining overall end performance. The combined model now has early performance comparable to vision, but achieves higher accuracy as tactile information becomes available. In our second experiment, we perform rotational slip classification. Here, we see Frankie lifting an object. On the left, the object is stable. On the right, the object slips. We have slowed down the video, because this all happens in slightly more than a tenth of a second, about the blink of an eye. As before, let's look at the test accuracies over time for models trained using standard spike count loss. The vision on the models can achieve perfect accuracy by the end of the motion, but the tactile model achieves better performance in the early phases. Just as before, using the weighted spike count loss significantly improves early classification accuracies. This is most clear for the combined model, which performs similar to the tactile model at the beginning and to the visual model for the end. Finally, let's talk about power consumption. We run the sleep SNN on a neuromorphic chip, the Intel Loy He, and the compared speed and power usage to Crystal's GPU. On the Loy He, the SNN is able to achieve slightly better speeds, but consumes far less power. In fact, the power consumption and the load on the Loy He is about 1.3 watts, which is even less than the idle power consumption of our GPU. For more information, visit our website where you'll find our paper, datasets, and code. Here, we've taken just one step towards robots that don't need huge batteries or frequent recharging, and so, just maybe, are better for our planet. We hope that our work will encourage more research in this exciting area of power-efficient, intelligent robots.